Hey guys and girls, what's happening? Welcome to it, I'm Kyle White and it has been a little while since I released a video. I'm sorry I've been incredibly busy but we're back now. This episode we're gonna check out whether I can film a relatively decent music video on a DSLR camera. <laughs> So recently on Instagram, I received a message from one of my followers who notified me that, you know, all of my work on social media is work that has been shot on cinema cameras, like the Arri Mini or the Red Dragon, which it is. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me. And he wanted to know if I could shoot a relatively decent looking music video on a cheap DSLR camera and I found this quite interesting and I wanted to challenge myself so I went along and I did it. That's a deal right? That's a bet right? That's a deal right? That's a deal right? Now the DSLR camera that I used is a camera that I still own, except this camera lies uh, on a display in my office because I just don't use it. And I've got the camera here. It's the Canon T2i or Canon 550D. And I've subsequently uh, dropped it. I don't know if you can see there on the screen. Back in the day, in 2011, this was the beast camera to use. And uh, essentially, this camera came out uh, just after the Canon 5D Mark II, which is the camera that sort of revolutionized the DSLR filmmaking world. And uh, when I first got the camera, I thought it was incredible. But in today's standards, it's not so incredible. And just to show you how not incredible it is nowadays, I'm going to compare a few specs between the Canon T2i and the Red Dragon. First off, on the Canon T2i, it films at 24 or 25 frames per second in 1080p, which is HD. And the Red Dragon films 25 frames or 24 frames in 6K. Now, when you go to slow motion, the Canon T2i does 50 frames a second, which isn't too bad. However, it is in half the resolution of HD at 720p, while the Red Dragon does it in 100 frames a second and 6K. When it comes to dynamic range, now dynamic range is the amount of information that your sensor can read between the shadows and the highlights, how much information it can bring in and it's measured in stops of light. If I had to give it a number, the Canon T2i comes in at like eight and a half stops of light of information that I can read while the Red Dragon comes in at more than double that at like 18 and a half plus stops of light which is like a massive difference. Now, believe you me, I do get the feeling that you are thinking this is ridiculous that I'm comparing a really cheap old school DSLR to a cinema camera like the Red Dragon, which it is, but I just wanna show you how ridiculously bad this camera is. So, what I needed to do was to find someone to shoot a music video for on this Canon T2i. Literally a week after I received this message on Instagram, my, my friend Ash, who is and uh, like a threat, like a, f not even a triple threat, he's a quadruple threat. He's a dancer, singer, rapper, and an actor. And uh, well, anyways, he contacted me and he wanted me to shoot a music video for him, obviously, and I said to him, listen, I'll film a music video for you for free as long as I can film it on a super old camera. And he was happy to do so. I just don't think he realized how old that camera was until shoot day. Just a disclaimer before I get into the behind the scenes footage and actually show you the final product. I want to let you know that this was different. This was difficult and it humbled me big time. Because this is not easy. But it also reignited the passion that I have for filmmaking, funny enough. Because this is where it all started. And I proved to myself that you, even if you bought this old camera from nearly a decade ago, you can make beautiful stuff. 
It'll get you started. So if you got a little DSLR, even if you got it in 2019 for Christmas, you're on the right path. I'm taking it back, yeah, I'm taking it back. You taking this way. You need to relax, you niggas just kept and I'm loving the hate. So there we were, with only a couple hours of light, Canon T2Y in hand, and zero budget for locations, props, models, none of that. So what I did was I went to the back end of a grocery store here in Johannesburg, South Africa, very close to my house that I actually like spotted a couple of weeks beforehand and was like, mm, I could shoot something there. We also found a random car in the car park that we used as our backdrop. And the most important thing for me to do was to set up my picture profile. Now on the Canon T2I, it doesn't have any fancy log profiles. So what I had to to do on the Canon T2i is set up my own picture profile that kind of emulated a log profile. And essentially all it is, is going into your picture profile and bringing down the saturation, the sharpness, and the contrast. Now the reason why log profiles exist is because they retain the most amount of information from your sensor. So instead of having a baked in picture, they give you a flat, very boring looking log profile. For the first shot, I had the sun directly behind Ash's head, acting as a very harsh backlight. And because of that harsh backlight, obviously his face was in shadow, so I just bounced a bit of light into his face with a reflector board. For this shot, I wanted to have a shallow depth of field. If you don't know what that is, well, it's just, just means the background's a hell of a lot more blurry and the subject is more in focus. But when you put your camera to say an f1.8, like what I had it for the shot, it means that it allows a lot more light into the camera. So what I had to do was stop down that light. Now typically, what you would do is you would get a variable ND filter which you screw onto the front of the lens, but I didn't have that, I only have an ND filter made for a matte box. So what I did, and it looks kind of stupid, is I took a, this 4x4 1.2 ND filter and I literally taped it onto the front of the lens. It looks silly, but it works. By bringing down the brightness of the scene, you are also able to keep the shutter speed at a responsible level. This is the last time I'm gonna talk about the Red Dragon Cinema Camera, but when it comes to weight, the Red Dragon Cinema Camera or the Arri Alexa, they're quite hefty cameras. And, and, and what filmmakers like about this is, because it's heavy, it actually allows for quite a natural um, sort of bounce to your footage when you're filming handheld shots. Because the Canon T2i is a very lightweight camera, you have to try and stabilize it with your elbows and any points of contact to, to kind of get the motion as natural as possible. To resolve this, what I did was I took the ready rig strap and then attached it to the lens and then obviously took that strap and attached it to the ready rig itself. And to my surprise, Works really well. Real G yeah. Signs, whatever they may be, zaps are whatever. Just make sure you hold it for a beat or two longer so yeah, I can yeah, actually yeah, pull yeah. the focus. Because okay. yeah. you're putting it up there and you're dropping it way too quickly. Yeah, yeah, so just yeah. hold it there, hold it there, hold it there, let me get it in focus and then come back to you. Okay. 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 Hold the zap sign, bro. I told you already. So for the last shots of daylight, we actually did it as the sun was dipping over the horizon. So the only light that we were using was ambient light. And for the close-ups, I just reflected a bit of light into the face, especially for the slow motion shots, because you know, on the Canon T2i, the slow motion shots are on half the resolution of HD, which is not ideal, and it needs a hell of a lot of light before it becomes grainy. Now, for this shot, I wanted to introduce a different type of camera movement. Everything up until that point was handheld, and after a while, it can get boring. So what I did was I brought in the old school gangster original Ronin and balanced my tiny Canon T2i on it, which looked also stupid, but it did the trick. <laughs> Thank you.
The trick to keeping your focus consistent with your artist when you are tracking inwards and outwards with your fancy gimbal is to measure out the distance between the artist and yourself. So measure out the complete distance that you're going to travel while filming the shot. And then go into the middle of that distance and get your artist in focus. What will then happen when you are tracking inwards and outwards is that it will seem as if the shot is in focus the entire time. But because the movement of the camera is so swift, the viewer won't notice. For my last scene setup, I decided to go to a green screen studio to test out the amazing color depth of the Canon T2i. For the lighting of the setup on the green screen, I used two aperture LED panels with no diffusion on them to cast very harsh light on either side of Ash's face. In this way, it brought him out from the background by creating a really nice art line around his frame. <laughs> So after filming for three to four hours, three separate locations, after looking really stupid, filming on the Canon T2i, which is a tiny camera, uh, this is what I managed to put together. Check it out. <laughs> Pull a trick out, cast on my life, man. What you heard? Real G talk. Move me, Rose Town King. What I'm destined to be. Don't you look in the mirror, you sold it. I put it out in the open. All of my these soldiers was with these rappers and jokes. Too much lean and I copy. Woo! Right, this was a lot of fun to put together. I hope you enjoyed it and it you know inspires you somewhat. And you know what, this is a challenge at the end of the day uh, that I gratefully accepted from one of you guys. And um, yeah, so thank you for, for, for giving me the challenge in the first place. It's inspired me to pass on this challenge. So I'm going to nominate three people that really inspire me when it comes to filming specifically music videos. And uh, the people that I'm gonna nominate as a challenge a music video filmmaking challenge to film a music video on a DSLR uh, or any type of camera that's old school, uh, maybe from a decade ago or beyond. The people that I am going to nominate is Christopher Cotton from Cotton Films, Olafemi and Creative Ryan. Let's say, let's give it a month guys. Let's see what you can come up with. And uh, good luck, it's gonna be fun. Anyways, guys uh, and girls, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really enjoy doing it and I, I love interacting with all of you. If you want to get a hold of me, please do so. Uh, the best place to do that is through my Instagram uh, profile. And if you want to find me, you can just go to at Kyle White TV. So uh, until next time, peace.